Hey guys, it's been like a month since the last video and I just wanted to update you on a couple of things before we get um, started on the meat of this video. Uh, firstly, the move. Uh, we're all moved in now, we handed the keys back last week for the old house. Uh, everything's in the new house. There's just like the odd things to do, like sort out the garage and put picture frames up and uh, coat, coat hangers and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but yeah, we moved in and we're getting settled and getting into some sort of routine. So that's all sorted, no more moving to worry about. Uh, really enjoying the new house, it's much quieter than the last one and there's loads of places for RC which is really good. So yeah, um, looking forward to spending the next, I don't know how long, in that new house. And um, yeah, it's so much nicer than the old one and yeah, happy, very happy with the move. Second thing would be the interview. Um, in my last sort of vlog kind of video I said I had an interview for an apprenticeship and um, before I tell you about the, what happened, um, I personally want to thank a couple of people. Uh, you left some really nice comments in the um, in that video where I told you about the interview. Uh, I'm going to name you. Um, we have QDC748A. Uh, he wished me luck on the interview. Um, we had Cody Thompson, XFlight101, and MPointRC. And we also have Tr Trevor Kuzara. Sorry for butchering the names there. Um, but yeah, they specifically went into the comments and wished me good luck um, with the interview. Um, and just gave some really nice support about you know, the breaking content and the moving and the interview and that there wouldn't be any um, videos coming up so really want to personally thank you, thank you so much that really brightened my day, I was super nervous about the interview as I always am, it was my second ever interview, I've only had um, one other one and I didn't get that one um, so yeah I was super nervous before it and you guys really helped me, um, helped me sort of, uh, I don't know what you call it yeah, just just really helped me get get through that interview and just to have people who I have no idea, I've never met you before, but just for you to wish me good luck was really nice, really nice to see. And the result of that interview was that I got it. I was offered the, um, it was on a Monday and they basically called me on Tuesday and said, if you want it, it's yours. And I can tell you a bit more about it now. Um, it's a um, sheet metal apprentice, apprenticeship. Uh, I'm basically a apprentice um, sheet metal worker. I um, work with big steel, aluminium, galvanized steel, mild steel, aluminium, uh, sort of plastic stuff as well, big sheets of plastic and um, I'll be learning stuff like welding and bending and uh, using big guillotines, big massive guillotine machines, all that sort of stuff. Um, all good stuff for RC as well. I can make, I can make when I'm learning I can make custom parts for the RCs. Uh, all stuff like that is really interesting and um, in the actual job description or apprenticeship um, advertisement it said I'd be earning about £8,000 a year <laughs> which is very very low but it's sort of standard for an apprenticeship in the UK and um, I've actually, I'm not, I'm not actually going to be earning that amount, I'm going to be earning more uh, roughly what I was earning before anyway, maybe a little bit more so um, I actually started that job, that apprenticeship last week uh, really enjoying it so far, it's tiring, really tiring, it's eight and a half hour days but it's great, it's so much more interesting than what I was doing before. Um, I was just doing basic warehouse work before. I was uh, working for an office supplies company, um, which I'll be sort of tell you all about in a bit. But yeah, um, it's so much more interesting. I'm not just putting numbers into a computer, I'm actually working and making stuff uh, out of metal and all that sort of stuff. It's really interesting, really enjoying it. And I'm just looking forward to the next, it's a three year apprenticeship and then hopefully they then um, want, want to take me on afterwards if I do well. So yeah, that's basically my um, my results from that interview. Thank you again for your support and um, yeah, it's going to be a bit weird. I've got to get into a new routine now with a new job and a new house, new place to live. I've just done some work in my car this weekend as well and um, everything's happening at once and it's all a bit crazy. But I'm going to try and get some videos out, I've got loads of projects to finish and yeah. So during the move the channel hit 2,000 subscribers which is insane. Um, I never thought it would reach this this size ever um, especially in the time that it has under under three years. It's just amazing and um, for this video I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for all the support. Um, I've said this many times before but thank you for commenting, liking, subscribing, watching the videos, you know all that stuff really helps. Also, people on the Facebook and Twitter pages. Um, Twitter pages isn't so sort of active. Um, I've linked it to the Facebook page, so every time I post something on Facebook, it goes to Twitter. Um, but I'm not particularly active on that. I don't really like Twitter, to be honest. I much prefer, prefer Facebook as a format. And um, yeah, there's uh, nearly 50 people on there now, which is nice. Nice little sort of community. Um, and I try and post as much RC stuff as I can, uh, just news and all that 
news, various videos I've seen, various things on eBay that look cool, um, anything RC related I try and post on the Facebook page. And I've had some really nice conversations. There's a guy I'm actually um, really good friends with now. He's um, he's thinking about starting up his channel again. So um, we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, so thanks for all the support. You guys have been stuck me with the two and a half years, some of you. And um, it's just great to see so many people watching the videos and supporting the channel. So thank you for that. And um, yeah, so I don't like to um, just tell, I'd say thank you. I'd like to do a, like a special, different sort of video. So today I'm going to take you around my setup, which um, you basically only see the table sometimes uh, and sort of a view this way, but you don't really see the full setup and what I've got in the drawers and all the sorts of truck projects and stuff I've got lying around. So yeah, I'm basically going to take you around my setup today, um, just a quick video, and um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy it. Thanks again for 2,000 subscribers, and um, let's get on with this. So yeah, so these are my basic multi, well, the tools I use the most. So we have my Bosch IXO drill, little drill. You've seen that loads. This is my, I need to find a better way of doing this, but this is my selection of my most used tools. Got like pliers and blades and knives, scissors, screwdrivers. These are my, where is it? That one. That's the screwdriver I'm using for every single project from the very start. Uh, I've got brushes. I've got my, let me see in there, team associated hex driver bit in there. So yeah, that's my most used tools. In here we've got various brushes, got like uh, we've got just normal brushes, we've got metal ones and we've got brass ones as well, they're quite soft. We've got picks and pens and little screwdrivers, little star bits as well. So I don't use them as much, just on the odd occasion. Obviously got my heavy duty waterproof um, oil, uh, grease there, not oil, bleh. so I've got that there, that's on hand. That's sort of main tools that I use. So this is the main sort of drawer section. It has changed very recently. I did have the um, white ones that ran all the way along with the little clippy boxes, uh, which you'll be seeing a bit later anyway. But yeah, so this is my new sort of drawer set. Got my um, vintage racing stand there, and got my uh, shock oils from Team Associated, and all these drawers as well. I haven't even filled all of them. It only goes up to about there, but in them, I'll just move you a bit closer. You can actually see. Move it further up. So these are all empty. These have got that's got some uh, like drill bits in. Got shocks there, spare shocks. I'm moving even a bit, even bit, even bit closer. Uh, empty, empty. So we've got stuff like plastic tubes. It's just all separated out. I haven't had a chance really to organise it properly. But if we move all the way down at the bottom, we've got more sort of useful stuff. We've got my oh, we can't even see. Blimey. We've got like thread lock. We've got the um, torque setting bit for my drill so it doesn't actually strip screws got some griller tape uh, I've got my HPI Pro Series body reamer, hole reamer sort of thing so I've got various stuff in there bigger section we've got some uh, glue for a glue gun which I recently got as well from the um, previous job which uh, was about a pound I've got various binding plugs and crystal things got shock springs all this sort of stuff, all the little bits that um, I wanted to separate out just so I've got a quick way to get them get to. I've got like bearings in there as well. So yeah, that's my um, draw set. And what I would like to do with that, I'll just move you over. There we go. What I would like to do is stick some stickers on the side, some RC stickers on both sides and just make it look a bit more colourful. Um, I do like quite like the black and I, um, I quite like how it is. Uh, it's, it's not very particularly stable, it does move quite a lot. I would like to put it in like a wooden frame just so it's a bit stronger but yeah so that's my um, that's my main drawer set where I get all my little bits from if I need any spare bits so this is my box of big bits that I can't really move anywhere else but I like to keep handy so these are the old drawer sets that I was talking about these are the ones that lined the back of the um, desk wall that were over that way uh, but yeah so I took them out because it was a bit annoying just to take them out unclip them then put them back in so um, yeah I've got rid of them so they're spares I can use them for whatever move them out of the way I haven't got a lot of room to work here, so I'm sorry. This was, this giant box actually was um, what the lunch box and the and I think it was the MO5. Oh, I can't remember the lunch box and some other big bits came in. Um, and you can see I've used I actually used it to spray the lunch box, which is just down there. Uh, but yeah, so this is my main spray box. So take everything out, just spray something in it, and then um, put everything back. So in here we have. Sorry if I get in the way a bit. This is a. I haven't used this yet. This was um, actually given to me by by my dad. He actually got two sets. Yeah, it's like a um, little Dremel set thing. Loads of little bits in there. Power 
clipping and stands and all that sort of stuff. So I'll be using that a bit later on anyway um, in some future videos. Got some plans for that to use that. Seal that back up. We have these little JCB boxes which are quite cool. I think they might like quite cool stands just to stand stuff on. Sorry, it's not in the light. So yeah, so we're going to try and find a use for them. Whether I just chuck them away, I don't know. This is obviously the old box for the yeah, racing TT01 suspension kit thing and in it we have heat shrink. I went onto eBay and bought a load of heat shrink. I don't know how long it was, it must have been like 200 meters of heat shrink. So that's all in that giant box there, you can see all the heat shrink in there so I shouldn't need to buy any more ever. And we've got a load of, we've got my soldering station in here by um, Tenma. We've got a little man thing to hold and little magnifying glass and little grips to hold the um, stuff that I'm soldering big thing of zip ties in the corner, I don't know whether you can see that, just there we've got some air, um, aerosol cans with um, compressed air in just to blow out all the dust and stuff and yeah that's about it in that box, it's just a bunch of random stuff that um, I like to keep handy uh, just in case but it's too big to just sort of have around so yeah that's my giant box of stuff. So basically this is the main drawer set that sits beside the desk and I'm constantly in and out of this all the time. So I'm just going to quickly show you what's inside. So that's my, um, whatever you call it, I can't remember now. That thing. Can't think of the name right now. It's beyond me. Uh, this is a like a little bit set that comes, this was um, from that previous workplace as well. It came in, um, didn't know where to send it back so I bought it. It was a pound, again, super cheap. But it's got loads of little bits, like drill bits, that I can use in my Bosch IXO. Tiny little bits like that, it's got hundreds of them. So if anything needs unscrewing <laughs> I've got the tool here so I've got that got some Lisa recent um, acquired something this is the um, shock pliers to hold the shock so they don't scratch the shafts we've got some very nice Eclipse pliers here these are my big ones these were really cheap got them from a car show they're super good no play in them at all really strong and really good quality so, um, this is a little tool that my dad got just to cut out arches, wheel arches. It's got a little blade on it and um, it goes out to various sizes and it's like it's like a little compass really, but it just cuts out stuff. It's got my Y strippers, you've seen them a lot. Got the heat gun, this was again from the previous workplace, again another pound. Uh, it's a Stanley heat gun uh, that does uh, heat gun, glue gun. Blech. So I'll be using that soon as well. This was some punches, whether I'll be able to use them or not, I don't know. And I've got uh, these cheap little screwdrivers, which are terrible. And I've got some spare TT01 chassis pieces here. Moving down, see if you can still see these properly. This is my sort of aerosol and liquid drawer. I've got a uh, plastic dip. Got, this is the giant roll of solder that I got from the previous workplace. Again, lots of this stuff came from my previous workplace and I just bought it really cheap. Uh, giant roll of solder, this must weigh about I don't know, half a kilo uh, loads on there, I should never need solder again, it's lead free uh, but it's pretty good So uh, we've got various filter oils for the nitro car, we've got glue, grease we've got the um, so, uh, flux there for when I'm soldering we've got shock oils, we've got little acrylic pots of paint that I used on the lunchbox got spray cans at the back and in here we've got a selection of thread lock all this thread lock I've got about five or six bottles of it that was from the previous workplace as well uh, all sorts lighters for when I'm uh, shrinking heat shrink so that's that drawer I may have to move the camera for the next one yeah this is the electronics drawer that's my co-rally 27 turn is it 27 turn yeah uh, motor that I took apart I'm just going to rebuild that eventually when I get time uh, this is the original motor that was meant to be used in the uh, drift car, 12 turn from LRP it overheated one of the ESC's, it's probably in here somewhere you can see masses of stuff in here I'm actually going to use that in the TT01, so I need to keep that out actually, it's a little 3 racing heatsink and fan uh, where's that ESC, Got that, that ESC burnt out immediately, super cheap, it's about £10 or something stupid that burnt out immediately, as soon as I plugged the battery into it, there it is that's the old uh, ESC for the drift car, the XT12 Trident from Model Sport. Uh, I think it overheated. I don't know. I've got to see what's wrong with it. But when I plugged in the motor and tried to plugged in the motor and the battery, I tried to run this and it burnt. It this got super hot, red hot. 
So I don't know whether that's broken or not. I'm going to try and get it working again because it's pretty decent ESC actually. It looks really cool. Uh, what else have we got in here? I've got about five or six of these standard Tamiya silver can motors. Just for, just as spares. Got a load of stuff from Etronics, like we've got a actual LED kit there from Boom Racing. That was from one of my AGTs orders. So, ooh, AGTs. But yeah, we've got loads of like extension stuff, uh, adapters, all that sort of stuff. Don't know what's at the back. Yeah, not a lot. Just loads of spare wires as well. We've got another soldering gun in there, just like a cheap one. Loads of connectors and got spare Dean's. I think that's an ESC one there. Don't know where that came from. But yeah, so that's. Um, that's the electronics drawer. I'm not really in there that often. That's mainly a dumping ground for broken stuff. I've got to stuff it all back in there. Next drawer. This is basically little sealy bags. Some strap things there. Got some orange zip ties, which look really cool. They look yellow on there, but they're actually a, quite a nice shade of orange. Uh, we've got sticky back servo tape stuff in there. Lots of stuff. It's all fallen out. The sealy bags just to keep stuff apart, more zip ties, and then we get to the stickers that I've amassed over three years, nearly three years. These I actually got very recently from a uh, previous workplace. Uh, they look really cool. I was thinking about a Mad Max theme for the next lunchbox body, so they'd match it quite well. And it's also the, the slogan from Fast and Furious, Ride or Die. Nurburgring sticker, and then we've got basically all of these. Loads of sticker sheets, got some signs there for a drift track if I, if, if I end up building one. Slippery surface, slow down, all that sort of stuff. Uh, drive slowly. <laughs> so yeah, I picked them up from the previous workplace as well, super cheap. I thought they'd make a cool sort of idea. Got loads of stickers, obviously from the lunchbox, and these are ones that I use for the cheap drift body I have. But yeah, so that's all sort of the stickers that I've been collecting over the years. Uh, moving down to the last two drawers, which is just there. Got a load of wheels in here, you can see. Got the um, original ones from the Rally Project. Got some from my dad's, uh, I think it's his pickup, something like that. So they're, super, they're quite perished and old, but keep them anyway. These are some cheap Chinese sort of drift wheels and tyre sets that I got from eBay, super cheap. These came off uh, my dad's MO5 when he bought it. Uh, from the, uh, an old Fiat body, I think it was. They're the old wheels from the Rally Project. What else we got in here? They're from the actual body set, the uh, Skyline body set for the drift car. So I've got those wheels. They're, uh, they've got a horrible tyre with them, and I think they're a bit thinner as well. So I don't really like using them because it looks a bit odd. Original wheels from my TT01 that it came with when I bought it. Uh, I've got the other set of drift wheels for the drift project. Uh, these were off my dad's TL01 that he's got that he's currently in a, in pieces, and we've got a load of spare tyres and stuff really not great tyres but they're okay so that's the wheel drawer it's probably not going to go back in now because I had it all in order but closed sorted and we have the final drawer which is you can't really see it pick it up to the camera so we have batteries in there that's the saddle pack for my dad's F150 uh, various saddle packs old ones these are uh, nickel cadmium batteries uh, they're pretty much knackered anyway. I've got some spare Ryan Sport Power ones, and we've got a load of instruction books as well, handy to keep around for my radio and for ESCs and stuff, just in case it gets a bit stuck. Um, always on hand. So yeah, that's the final drawer, and we're done with that set of drawers. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, I've seen a couple of videos where people show me their setups, and I quite like them. So if you enjoy this sort of thing, fine. And uh, final thing. We've got bumpers and stuff for the TL01, we've got various TT01 components there, body posts, we've got shock, uh, standard shock things, the little friction shocks which are pretty rubbish, uh, various odds and sods, we've got pinion gears, we've got aluminium parts, from that's from the drift project that, I've actually, that, that I didn't need or have had to replace, uh, I've got steer, servo steering bits there, I've got gears, uh, drive cups and, uh, what do you call them? C hubs, drive cups, uh, suspension arms. We've got aluminium drive drive shaft stuff there. We've got dog bones in there and drive shafts. I'm not sure what's in that one. Looks like dr more drive cups and stuff and various body plastic bits. Uh, but that's basically all the spare parts that I can go to just in case I need something. And yeah, it's quite a lot of stuff. So basically, that's a view of my setup and what it takes to film videos for the channel. Uh, lots of stuff, it's built up over two and a half years, um, I can't believe how much stuff I've actually got, 
it's mad and um, there is the potential to actually have a workspace at home that means I've got to shift all of this stuff over to the new house and set it up again so that might be coming I don't know yet I've got to sort out the garage and make a space for my new workplace if I get one um, but yeah so that um, could be coming in the future but I've got to move all of this stuff and I, there's so much stuff here everywhere I'm sort of dotted around all over over here down here you know it's everywhere um, so yeah it's organized to a way that I know where everything is uh, but it might seem like a mess to other people Pff, I don't know um, but yeah so hopefully you enjoyed this sort of video um, it was a bit rushed together because I didn't know what to do for 2,000 subscribers we hit it so fast and um, obviously with the moving and the new job and all that sort of stuff it's been a bit wild recently um, but yeah so hopefully you enjoyed this sort of style of video hopefully you know more about my setup and what I've actually got and how much I've collected over that, that time period and um, yeah I want to say thank you again for 2,000 subscribers it's so nice to see the support for the channel uh, considering I don't make any money from it or there's no advertising on the channel. It's nice to see that people support the channel. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying doing it. I don't want to stop. I want to just keep going, keep with the build videos and the run videos. And just, yeah, keep in contact with you guys, um, leaving nice comments all the time, asking questions, uh, all that sort of stuff. I like the, the communication. And um, the support from you guys has been amazing. And um, yeah, looking forward to the next year, seeing what we can do with RC again and seeing what we can create thank you so much for 2000 subscribers uh, thanks for watching thanks for supporting the channel over this little break and we should be back with normal videos very soon so thank you very much i'll see you next time on rc projects bye